JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 26th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the market. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued trading lower against the majority of the, uh, of the other G10 currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session Wednesday. It underperformed the most against NZD, SEC and AUD in that order, while it was found virtually unchanged, virtually unchanged versus CAD and JPY. Then Greenback egged out some gains only against the GBP. Now, the weakening of the US dollar combined with the strengthening of the risk linked Aussie and Kiwi suggests that uh, markets continue trading in a risk on uh, manner yesterday and today in Asia. That said, turning our gaze to the equity world, uh, we see that um, EU indices uh, traded mixed, while in the US all three of Wall Street's uh, main indices closed uh, slightly in the red. Only during the Asian session today, market sentiment improved again. Now, with no clear catalyst behind yesterday's cautiousness, we believe that this may have been due to getting closer to the release of the core PC index, which is uh, which is the first, uh, which is the Fed's favorite inflation metric. However, investors uh, gained some confidence again during the Asian session today, perhaps as uh, some more uh, Fed officials expressed the view that uh, the inflation surge is likely to prove to be temporary and that it's not time to discuss withdrawing policy support yet. I have not seen anything yet to persuade me to change my full support of our accommodative stance, uh, Chicago Fed President Charles Evans said, while San Francisco's uh, Mary, Daly, Mary Daly noted that uh, right now policy is in a very good place. We also got to hear from Vice Chair Richard Clarida, who although noted uh, that uh, the CPI numbers were a very unpleasant surprise, the baseline case remains that the surge in inflation is transitory. He clarified that if the pressure proves to be persistent, the Fed will act to bring it down, but also added that even though at some point um, they will start discussing scaling back their QE purchases, uh, that is not the focus uh, right now. Therefore, with more officials uh, maintaining a dovish stance, we stick to our guns that equities still have room to trend north for a while more, while the US dollar may stay on the back foot. That said, before getting more confident on uh, that front, we would like uh, to see whether uh, committee members will keep the same stance after the release of the, of the PC data on Friday. Now, today, during the Asian uh, morning, apart from developments surrounding uh, the broader market sentiment, and the traders uh, increased their long uh, positions following uh, the RBNZ interest rate decision. The bank decided to keep its monetary policy settings unchanged, but the tone of the accompanying statement in the meeting minutes was uh, much more optimistic than previously. Instead of clearly saying that they remain ready to lower the official cash rate if required, Officials just agreed that the official cash rate is the preferred tool to respond to future economic developments in either direction. Most importantly though, they noted that uh, on current projections, the official, cash, um, the official cash rate eventually increases over the medium term, with their forecast suggesting uh, that this may happen in the second half of uh, 2022. 
Uh, as for our view, conditional upon um, further improvement in the broader market sentiment, the upbeat language of the RBNZ is likely to help the Kiwi to continue performing well, especially against the US dollar, which we expect to stay pressured due to a dovish Fed. Now, as for the rest of today's events, the calendar uh, today appears very light, with the only release worth mentioning being the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week, with expectations pointing to a 1.050 million barrels uh, decrease following a 1.321 million barrels increase the week before. However, bearing in mind that yesterday the American Petroleum Institute uh, report revealed only a 0.439 million, million excuse me, barrels slide, we would consider the risks surrounding the Energy Formation Administration report as tilted to the upside. We also have two speakers on today's agenda, and those at Fed Board Governor Randall Quarles and Bank of Canada Governing Council member Timothy Lay. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of uh, the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.